now we've got to suss out why this isn't working. So um, the battery is a bit shagged. But even with the, um, with the charger on, it, it cranks over way too many times before it thinks about firing. So I'm looking at ignition circuit first of all on it. Not a tiny bit of a quarter inch I'm looking at this. Okay, quarter inch. So all I'm really doing, in fact, I don't even have to take that off because that can come off with the base plate. So let me do it this way around and we'll work on the bench thing. So if I undo this screw here, which has got an earth cable to it, and lift the little screw out, don't lose him. Put him in the lid of the box, so I'll lose him later on when I pick the box up and it all goes flying all over the floor. And then the other screw, he can cut out. Right, now you can see the base plate's loose. So now the whole base plate just lifts up and out of the distributor. It's got the peg, peggy, um, for the um, vacuum advance, which should come out of there. I'm just slackening it off a bit. I'll, I should retime this thing again. Probably getting running. But all I'm having to do here is just lift the spring off the peg. I put a bit of slack on it, you see, and then I can lift the base plate out. There we are. Base plate is out. Base plate. Anyway, put that on the bench. Inside here, we have got bob weights. Now, the idea behind these bob weights is they're a mechanical advance, and I think I can see that it's quite dry down here. Um, now, what you should do is you should lubricate on the top of the distributor because the top part of the shaft is separate from the bottom part of the shaft. So, let's do that first of all. It could just be that it ain't lubricated. Should, should only need a, a drop at every service. That'll do. Get the video back and I'll find it. Right now, wiggle that backwards and forwards a little bit. These um, bob weight springs don't seem particularly. See, that's rotating better now. That's springing back. Now I've lubricated down that shaft. That's better. I think it was that shaft lubrication rather than bob weights. It was okay. It's certainly got both springs on it. And this is what, this is the kind of behavior that I'm expecting. There's my torch hiding behind the tripod. What I'm expecting here, let's just I'll put that on there. Let's put the rotor back on. See, the idea is when you rotate it, you want it to spring back. It's almost springing back to where it should do. Not quite all the way. I think there's some play on the drive gear underneath the distributor, but I'm not going to take the distributor out at the moment. We'll assume that because it's driving in one direction, we're only going to have that piece there to worry about, which is the mechanical advance. Now, let's have a look at the edge of the rotor next. Nice and clean, nothing wrong with that. That's okay, I'm happy enough. I don't want to spray loads of crap inside here, but I might just lubricate up the pivot the mechanical advance. It's certainly working better now than it was before. Right, so, First thing I do with this is make sure that the cam on the points hasn't worn down and it hasn't. Next thing I'll do is I'll push the points open and I'll just check to see if there's any pitting on the surface and there isn't. So that will indicate to me the condenser and the points are in good order. Um, this is the bit I was talking about where it was a bit caught up. You can see there the, the, the fabric is frayed. That's the earth, that's vital. Right, now what we were seeing was a certain amount of rotation between the top part and the bottom part of the distributor body. These things are supposed to move. They're designed to. Okay, That screw there which holds the points down stops this thing completely disassembling. I don't necessarily want to do right now. It's got some notches on it, but I've seen a lot worse. That's an earth there, you see. And, but then it's also got the earth cable from the top plate to the bottom plate. Are those points even closing? Yeah, 
Yes, they are. We can check continuity across the circuit anyway. Um, or I can. I will not refer to myself in the third person ever again. Right, 14 to 16 thou. We have 15 then. Uh, 6, 9, 10, 11, 13, 15. There we are, on the top. Fifteen thou of an inch. And then position the feeler gauge. That's better already. Are we actually on the lobe? Position the distributor round so it's, the lobe is actually on it. Now, what you'll find on more often than not on these distributors is there are two little slots in the distributor that allow you to put a large flat blade screwdriver into the hole. And move backwards and forwards and you can actually rotate the points open and closed okay so a certain amount of spring on the points you see but you want the feeler gauge to go in nice and clean right that's nice and clean now holding that there then i will do this up Wind him over to the next lobe. That's it, that's good. That's good. Happy with that. Right, low tension circuit. He's done. Now we're getting to do this condition timing again. But I've got an advanced retard on here. So we'll see if we can get him started up first of all. And there's only a certain amount of movement that you've got on this distributor. I will lube this up as well, by the way. That slips in and out. Then let's double check the connections. That's a nice solid connection, and that is a nice solid connection. Cap go back on. Rotor needs to go in because that would be a beginner's mistake, wouldn't it? One thing with the cap, make sure the spring is still in there. There's a carbon brush right in the middle here. It's got a spring thing on it. Make sure it still works. Um, I've had one in the past um, where the little thing, that's what's happened with that white wire. It's got caught underneath there. Ignition timing because I've adjusted it. Um, so let's get top dead centre by cranking the engine over. Our number one's up here, so we're coming up toward number one firing position now. We're not far off the timing point on the engine. Find them. Right, that'll be top dead centre on the nail. <laughs> I trip over the. Uh... Right, so right down here. Take the phone off the clamp. Right. Go down to the depths of the engine here. You see the three teeth there. The nose of the torch is almost on them. Three teeth and a big tooth. And I've got it marked up. You can see the line on the crankshaft pulley. Um, but that's not right for where we are here. So I need to go and work out what those marks are because they don't look like these marks. I found a proper Land Rover manual, two and a quarter petrol models. This is the marker that I've got, this style. That's the one that the Haynes likes to report against, that style. It's different. This is the one I want. Multiple so, pointers represent six, three, Top dead centre and six after. Ah, oh. right. So basically, I've got after top dead centre on this. So I need to crank this over again. It's got cold out here because I've been sitting inside. You see, and the fire's dad's got the fires lit. I need to crank this over again, and I want it on the second of the small ones because it's gone just past top dead centre. So I'll get it over to the second one. 
and then we'll probably need to mess around rotating the distributor but uh, that would explain why um, it's not working after a tinsy bit of head scratching I've got it set up beautifully charging the battery up this is where the head scratching came in So it starts up beautifully and absolutely no issues at all. I'll fiddle around with the timing as well, got the timing and all sorts of stuff, but it starts up beautifully when that's charging it. Probably shouldn't start it while that's connected to it, but uh, I'm going to go through the engine earths and all of the earths on this vehicle um, around the engine because I've got a feeling that the problem is uh, low current. It's got the voltage, but it's got no current um, to the starter because basically what I was doing was doing all the classic tricks of taking an HT lead off, plugging it onto a spark plug, resting it on the fuel filler, cranking the engine over, no spark, flip the points open no spark, connects it up to the king lead, flick the points open, spark. So you get a really, really, really weak spark. Um, as soon as I put some grunt through it, courtesy of my little start chargey thing, and this is only on a charge at the moment, it's not even on a high charge, it's on a normal charge, but it's putting a few more ramps through the circuit than it would do normally. So that to me would indicate there is an issue with the earths. In fact, one of these earths here is looking decidedly sad. In fact, that is fucked. That one is doing nothing at all. That's melted inside. So there you go, found the problem. How about that? So I've got a load of um, decent sized leads. I will make up some new earth cables. And I think then this should be fixed. Um, I did adjust the timing, by the way. So the timing is now set absolutely bang on. Um, once it started, I just did it the old fashioned way of rotating the distributor back and forth. Give the engine a rev uh, to clear it. Give it another rev. Um, and if it revs cleanly, um, then kind of set it and when I double checked it uh, statically against the um, against the marks on the on the pulley it is just after three degrees before top dead center so it's about the two degrees before top dead center is its, it's sweet point that's on the fuel it's running now bear in mind it's not completely hot and also the um, air filter is not attached to it at the moment it's quite likely that I'll need to go through and, and fiddle with the ignition just a teensy bit more but for now, I'm happy with it. Right, you need to untangle all these fucking leads now. Look at the state of them. It's like a big bowl of spaghetti. Um, right. No, I'm not on fire. It's cold out here tonight. <clears throat> Made up a complete new earth system for this, this, this vehicle. So we've got a brand new earth clamp which goes to chassis. Battery stands on chassis. Then it connects double loops straight onto engine, and then from engine it goes up to body. There we are, body. There was no body connection before. That was the body earth. Not quite sure how that happened. Anyway, it's being unhappened now. So I just need to, what I'm going to do is loose fit to the battery and check it out. And if it all works, then next thing needs to fix the horns. It's all back together again. There's only one thing to find out now. Does it work? Um, right, everything's out of the way there. Oh! Ah! It starts to have a damn sight easier than it did before. Side and head. White. Probably should turn the iron to speed up a tiny bit. Right. Well, that's sorted out, I think, the problem we have with the body earth and the chassis earth and the earth in general because it was all a bit shit. This is the cable that was on it. While it's not completely broken down, it looks like it's been carrying some heat, doesn't it? So, I've got a special place for this one. Oh! Reminds me. Whenever I finish a job and it's gone five o'clock, Side. Caught the six crying out loud. 
Right, the horn is next. We'll work up the front of the horn before we get smoked out of here. Condensation. Bloody I might put those on. Oh, bollocks. This has not amused me. This has not amused me much at all. I think someone's trying to tell me something. Right, here we go. Fucking thing. Right, I have to do this one quick. Not fucking over there. Wanker. <laughs> 